Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Katie Asko from Dublin, Ireland, and these are your latest headlines from around the world. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky on Tuesday, March 22nd, expressed his desire for the Vatican to play the role of mediator in bringing an end to the hostilities in his country. He sent a message to Pope Francis on Twitter, explaining the humanitarian situation and the Russian blockade of rescue corridors that are affecting the distribution of aid to displaced people. In his message, the President said the mediating role of the Holy See in ending human suffering would be appreciated. Zelensky also thanked the pontiff for his prayers for Ukraine and for peace. During his Sunday Angelus, the Pope had decried the violent aggression against Ukraine and the senseless massacre. He also appealed to the international community to commit themselves to end this abhorrent war. In war hit Ukraine, Catholic parishes have become humanitarian centers as internally displaced Ukrainians flee their cities, says the head of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, Major Archbishop Shevchuk. During his daily video message on Tuesday, the top prelate of the largest sui juris Oriental Catholic Church in communion with Rome expressed his gratitude to the church leaders, pastors and volunteers who are working tirelessly for their countrymen. In his address, the major archbishop stressed that the priests and religious continue to serve the needy despite severe attacks. He said, quote, looking into the eyes of our priests, our pastors, our volunteers, in their eyes I saw the victory of Ukraine because they are working for it. They live for it. They live in our very churches themselves. Archbishop Shevchuk added that he had visited priests in the Kiev Archiparchy, busy assisting the displaced people. Meanwhile, the violence shows no signs of halting, and according to official UN reports, close to 3 million people have fled Ukraine since the Russian invasion. Both inside and outside Ukraine, Catholic leaders continue to appeal for an immediate ceasefire. Meanwhile, in the US, a majority of voters have expressed support for a new bill in Florida that restricts gender and sexual orientation instruction for children in kindergarten through grade three. As per the latest Rasmussen reports, a national telephone and online survey, 62% of likely voters have supported the parental rights and education bill in Florida. Among the voters, 45% strongly support the legislation, while 29% have expressed their opposition. The bill states that, quote, classroom instruction instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. A delegation comprising representatives of the Indigenous Peoples of Canada and the Catholic Bishops of the Nation will call on the Holy Father in Rome during their visit from March 28th to April 1st. This comes in the wake of the discovery of mass graves on the premises of former church-run residential schools in Canada, triggering an avalanche of attacks on Catholic churches and shrines across the country. The Catholic prelates said that they are saddened by the residential school legacy in which children of Indigenous peoples were forcibly separated from their parents and enrolled in Christian residential schools, where many of them died from disease and ended up in unmarked graves. The visit is expected to foster reconciliation between the church and the native communities. Elders, knowledge, keepers and youth will be part of the delegation that meets the Holy Father. As the wave of attacks in Nigeria's Kaduna state continues, leaders of Christian communities in the area have voiced their grief and indignation over the series of killings. In the latest incident, armed bandits descended on Kora local government area on March 20th, murdering at least 15 people and torching houses, according to local media reports. The Christian Association of Nigeria's report says people are being killed and no substantial action is being taken by the authorities or the security agencies. Meanwhile, the local authorities have imposed a 24-hour curfew in Jama and Kora local government areas following the attack. Over the past few years, innocent people, mostly Christians, have been targeted in the West African nation. The number of Christians who are killed or injured is on the rise. The attacks are blamed on Islamic insurgents, including the Boko Haram, Muslim Fulani herdsmen and armed bandits who regularly target believers. The relics of Saint Bernadette, the French visionary to whom Our Lady appeared in Lourdes, will be brought to the US next month, where they'll be taken across 26 dioceses. 
The Sacred Relics will begin their journey in South Florida at Our Lady of Lourdes Church in Miami after a welcome Holy Mass on April 7th. During Holy Week, Archbishop Thomas Wenske of Miami will offer Holy Mass in the presence of the relics on April 11th, followed by a candlelit procession. The relics will remain in the Our Lady of Lourdes Church until April 18th, when they will be seen off with a multilingual farewell Mass, after which they will cross the nation, visiting various dioceses. As many as 34 cathedrals, churches and chapels will welcome the relics of St. Bernadette through to August. Pro-life defenders in the U.S. state of West Virginia are celebrating after state governor Jim Justice signed a bill banning abortions upon the detection of deformity in the child. The Unborn Child with Down Syndrome Protection and Education Act forbids anyone from terminating a pregnancy on the possibility that the baby might develop a disability. The governor signed the bills on Monday, which will come into effect from June 10th. Celebrating World Down Syndrome Day, the governor tweeted, quote, both bills give deserved respect to our Down Syndrome community. The new legislation states that the abortion provider has to submit a letter to the state after an abortion confirming that fetal disability was not a reason for the life-ending procedure. If any medical practitioner fails to follow this, their medical license can be suspended, whereas the one seeking an abortion will not face any penalties. Recently, Florida House representatives passed legislation banning abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. In the Holy Land, religious leaders belonging to the Jewish, Christian and Muslim faiths have attached a letter to the wall of the Russian Orthodox Cathedral of the Holy Trinity. They did this on Monday, March 21st, urging Patriarch Kirill of Russia to intervene in the Ukrainian conflict. In the letter, the leaders asked the Patriarch to appeal to President Vladimir Putin to bring an end to the hostilities. The letter says, quote, We are saddened to see the fighting, which primarily pits Orthodox Christians against each other. The event was hosted by Rabbi Yonatan Nehru of the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development and was attended by Latin Patriarch Archbishop Pizzaballa, Sheikh Hassan Galian of the Muslim Community and Rabbi David Rosen of the American Jewish Committee, International Director of Interreligious Affairs. Those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow and visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.